Hello everybody, my name is Aftermath and welcome to another episode of Crash Bandicoot 2 on the Gaming Hydra. Nice that you sticked around. The Gaming Hydra had a nice little group project I should really put into spotlight much more on my present channel. Anyway, last time we stopped I had to revisit this level because I missed the crystal. I am not sure if um, cutscenes have been fixed. I changed um, some of the cuts. Um, what was it called? I changed some of the plugins, but not too much. So we're gonna try again. If not, well then, tough luck. Never had a problem before, really. So I just basically changed to what I used pre-recording this. Um, I tried to Google, but nobody had this problem. So I think it was really just my system messing up big time. Not too much of a problem. It's currently 1 a.m. 1 p.m. and I haven't slept since 24 hours. So failures will, fa failures will happen both in language and in actual gameplay. But not that I mind. Implying I am a good player anyway. Last time I used the right way, there was a crystal there, or maybe I just missed it. Now I'm using the left way. There should be a crystal here, and I'm not going to miss it. Hi. Hop, hi, hop, hi, hop, hi. Bam, bam, and alive. Nice, I've heard. Now I have seven, and this, whatever it does. Hi, hi, stupid bird. Oh, like, there's a crystal. Nice. So I really did forget it because I went the wrong way. Nice. How am I even supposed to know that? Oh, well, I don't know. Gotta make assumptions that you have a crystal you never picked up, for example, is a good assumption. Give you one piece of advice, though. Don't make it. Pretty stupid assumption to reach perspective. Anyway. So why am I awake for 24 hours I'm going? Because I'm writing. I love to write. Write's good for the soul and heart. Or something. I don't actually know. Whatever. I don't care. I don't really know what to do after Bandicoot um, 2, so I decided to just pump up um, this Let's Play a little longer and put it into what I like to call 100% mode. As mentioned last time, 105% because this is Crash Bandicoot and it ain't no logic, but... Well, you know, I could still try. So now I finished the level, time for the first boss. You can easily get the diamond here, but I just put, didn't bother. <laughs> Not really, because I was just dated with this level anyway, I played it the most because I had to restart and now this is just, I don't know. I couldn't imagine better and more fun things, for example, playing um, this game. But, look, let's let's check. Good luck. Okay, this is still as buggy as last time, but at least this time the face isn't disappearing. Kind of creepy. I really wonder why this is. I don't really know. Seems like a soft lock though. No, it's not a soft lock. So I'm just gonna explain what he said because I know he told me to go up. That's it. That's all he told me. So why did he tell me to go up? Because boss fight. Yeah, there are boss fights in this game. In this case, is Dizzy Dingo, Dingo Duke. I don't really remember. I'm just gonna figure out in like seconds. It's basically Einstein Dingo. He's really easy. Ripperoo. All right. It was Ripperoo. So he does those weird things on the ground, and then it explodes. Nothing happens. Except as he goes onto his feet and does Nitro instead. Again, nothing happens, if you know where to stand. So the explosion radius is not this, that was stupid. He jumped on me and I didn't realize it. So here's the explosion radius. This, and I would get blown up. Here, not so much. Do you see the fields on the ground? It's two fields, basically. Like here I'm safe, what's the right, I would be blown up. So let's try this. I'm just gonna stand here, wait for Ripperu to do his chores, and then blow himself up. Like right now. Bam! Here you go. He blowed up. Now I can. Now I can hit him. He loses an HP, and I have to do this three times. The pattern changes, obviously. I mean, the pattern might as well not change, but that's um, a little bit inconvenient, to say the least. Because that would make for a very bad boss fight. But it's already a bit of a boss fight, it's like an auto scroller basically. So right now, going by his pattern, I would be safe here. And I am. It's good. Now one more. Let's see where he jumps. Um, he is nearly jumping on me, which I don't like. 
Right now I'm still safe here, so I'm gonna stay here. I'm not going to be safe here, so I'm not da safe there either. I kind of missed it. I was standing in between, so I have to restart, which is a little bit annoying. <laughs> it's really just an auto school. I'm just standing here being like, what might, what are you doing? Why are you not going to be faster? I don't know. But the thing is, I can't really do the screw around with nitro boxes because they blow me actually up and kill me. They are not waiting six seconds. He just jumps on them and dies. I don't even know what is his point of jumping on TNT. I don't get it. Is this his hobby? Does he have fun with that? It kind of rustles my jimmies, to be honest. Because, I mean, what the hell? Absolutely irrational. I mean, I would understand to make a maze or something and then drag me with a giant hedgehog and a bandicoot magnet through the stage. He doesn't do that. He just plays in them, jumping on them, making them explode himself, and then dying. You get the idea? Well, now, I don't do it either. I don't get the idea of his evil scheme of blowing himself up. Call him what you want. I'm sure as hell not going to call him any smart. I should be safe here. I am. Nice. I'm not going to call him any smart because for this boss fight in particular I moved like nothing and I killed him with moving nothing. So if that's speaking for me. Now Crash does this weird dance. Doesn't always trigger. It's kind of weird. I don't really know why he does it. Anyway. Second world. Nice. Let's do a mission called... Um, oh no. No, no, no. Buggy cutscene. Okay, I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, I'm gonna do the eel deal. That sounds fair. <coughs> There's no really a lot of story in this, so whatever. It's sad that it's buggy. I wish to fix it, but I gotta figure that out for the next part. So again, I'm only recording one part, and then I'm gonna fix it for the next part. I at least tried to fix it, because I thought this fixed it, but it didn't. That was close. So this whole gimmick about this missions are the eels, which make the water go electric. And in case you haven't noticed, that's kind of bad for me. If it hits me, I die. I'm collecting just some apples for life. Oh, um, I totally forgot that this rat will kill me. So I'm not gonna go the way of the apple. Um, alright. Does this make any sense whatsoever? Oh, there's a hidden passageway behind this. This is interesting. Oh, the green crystal, isn't it? Yeah, this is the green crystal. Let's try to get it. It sounds harder than it should. I'm just waiting for this eel to not do his stuff. Because that shows her much, much safer. Here's the green crystal. Nice. Hi. Now I need to go back upwards. Yeah, probably. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. I'm not gonna sell my soul to you, Ego. I'm going to be very careful. Nothing's going to kill me on the way back with the green crystal. Because I'm not sure if I keep it. Not really sure I, if I want to test either way. The eagle is like, zap, and I'm like, nope. Okay, I died. Um, am I keeping this here, um, little thing here? I am. Alright, this is good. For one second, I was afraid that I wouldn't. Okay, I died because I'm stupid. But I have the green thing right now. I don't even know. That was a little much easier than I expected. Now, I get um, the accessibility of green doors. Which is a good thing, I suppose. Um, sh certainly needed for some missions, um, secrets, uh, gem, or even the uh, what's it called, the chests, in order to get the gem in the first place. And the first level that actually uses a green door would be the green level. Oh, I kind of screwed this up. I didn't want to go to the bonus stage, but whatever. I could show them off. I wasn't here before, this, so why not? So bonus stages, all about them smaky bonuses. You need to do basically every single chest in those, and if you want to get the 
um, if you want to get the uh, gem at the end of the level, and I just failed to do that. But I'm not gonna die, I'm just gonna spawn in front of the level, and I'm not gonna give a crap about it. Alright, so I, I'm not going to... Alright, this is another, it seems what, what it looks like a secret. I'm not gonna go the way of the bur uh, the way of the fruits, because I think that they would screw me up. Oh, I, I get it, you, you screw me up too. I, I, I just wanna go the way of the secrets this game. Why not? I mean... Looks like fun. Don't it? I think it does. I mean, why, why wouldn't I collect secrets? Game is about collecting secrets. I'm doing 105% anyway. So why 105%? Oh, well, I'm gonna show you why 105% once I get done with the game. There's so much more about this game than 50 stages and 50 gems, you know? Uh, 50 diamonds. Now, actually, I'm forced to do the bonus stage, or else this was wasted. I assume. Yeah. I can't, what, what happens if I jump below here? Oh, wow. That seems like an alternative level exit, which will not give me, reward me with what I need to finish the level uh, successfully first. Oh, that was stupid. I didn't want that to happen. Oh, whatever. Nothing I could do about it. I missed the timing and committed to it, and then I lost. As a clever result. I mean, that's what always happens if you miss the timing on those climbing sections. You die. This is a jump and run game. Basically, if you miss timings in a jump and run game, you're probably going to die. This is the whole purpose of jump and run games, and I don't really like this corridor a whole lot. Okay, you can burn there, so I, I should jump over those things. I shouldn't jump under them. Guys, time to do those things again. Oh, wow. As if I haven't had anything better to do. Yes. No. Maybe. Oh. Wait for this. Wait for this. Okay, I failed again. I missed the jump. Alright, I try a couple of times more because I have to, because I activated the checkpoint because I'm stupid. I don't really remember this level playing being played out like this. I gotta be honest. Probably not gonna get the sapphire this time. Just because I screwed over. The crystal, not the sapphire. The gem and the crystal. There's gem and crystals in this game. Gems, crystals. Get it in your head after all. Get it in your head. It's not that hard, John. The one is shiny and long, the other one is not as shiny, but it's not long. Depending on which color it actually is, somewhat shiny. This one is pretty shiny. I mean, look at it, look at the 3 d shininess here. I actually doubt it's fairly outdated. Oh look, I didn't get the crystal, as assumed. So, I just went two secret ways and I regretted doing the second one. But the first one gave me a green crystal, so that's kind of cool. Should we do the eel deal again? Probably not. Okay, I can't really remember what this does, but... Oh yeah, he just he just tries me to explain me what Cortex is actually planning and what I should instead be doing as in listening to him. Because he can stop um, help me stop Cortex if I can get all the crystals, so I'm gonna do that. Later, my friends, later. So now we have the first auto runner stage. They are there in every Crash Bandicoot game. You can run very fast if you press the circle button. Or you can be very slow by pressing behind. And you can slide and it's, it's basically an ice beer, what I expected. There's checkpoints here too. Why? Well, because of killer whales. I'm actually not kidding, killer whales. And totems standing in your way. Actually, if you run against them, here's a killer whale. Oh my god, so damn spooky. Those chests just randomly explode to show you that soon in this level there will be chests that might as well randomly explode. It's kind of like a little bit of a tutorial. Don't know what I'm talking about? Watch Sequelitis Mega Man. That's a great series by Egoraptor and everyone should have watched it. 
and Sequelitis with uh, Mega Man is probably the best one out of them. And he explains rather well why good games show you mechanics without actually being able to hurt you. So you see what they do in case you really encounter them, which is called a very intuitive tutorial. I don't really know the name of Igoraptor gave it, or Aaron gave it, that to this mechanics itself, but it makes sense once you're there. So this fucker threw me off. What screw you? That's all I have to say. There's no word for you how much spite I am currently having my body for this little wash beer. No, I'm just joking. I kind of like it. Anyhow, not too long ago, I decided to record. And when I say I decided to record, I also decided that at one point I probably need to quit the recording. Because it's getting a little long. That little long? Kinda now. In other words, save game. Save game. And you know why? Because after we have signing out. Thanks for watching the gaming hydra. As always, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you found out of the episode. If you have some topics I could talk to, just do that, or if you have just some feedback. If you want me to shut up, well then, I'm sorry, I'm probably not gonna. You can mute the video though, if you still enjoyed it, and I would really love that. In other words, after signing out, but not without giving you a headache. This is not very effective, is it? Eh. Goodbye, and stay healthy.